everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's fantastic to have you with us for our webinar, Getting Your Brain Cyber Fit, What Science Says About Why We Sleep and How to Rest Your Way to Success. My name's Amanda Davis. I'm a sports anchor for CNN. I'm delighted to be your host today in these uh, strange times. I don't know how many times we've said that over the last few weeks or months. I don't know about you. I've stopped looking at my diary for where I should be today, this week. Uh, I should actually be in Tokyo at the moment covering the Olympic Games, which of course have been pushed back to next year. I'm often found at Formula One, at Formula E as well, where of course I've had the real pleasure of working with Acronis and their partners, uh, Williams and Rocket Venturi, and of course the team at Hinsa who are also with us involved today. Life as we know it certainly changed earlier this year, didn't it? It brought new challenges to all of us. So this webinar is all about not just being cyber fit in terms of protecting data from cyber attacks, but also about the importance of being physically and mentally ready for the new reality. Being cyber fit used to mean just making sure that your online presence, your online community was safe and secure, but it means so much more now. Being cyber fit at Acronis means more than just protecting your data. And during today's webinar, we're gonna have a look at how Acronis can help you, partners and friends during this period of change. Uh, just before we kick things off though, as always, a few housekeeping notes. The conference is being recorded. We're going to email you the link to the recording afterwards so you can share it with your friends and colleagues who can't be with us live. Your microphone will be muted throughout the event, uh, but we have a Q&A interface here on Zoom, so please do send us your questions through that. Uh, we do, really do have a fantastic lineup of speakers for you today, starting with Sergey Balosov, for the Acronis founder and CEO. Next up, we've got Dan Sims, uh, a senior performance coach at Hintzer, and they're both going to be joined by John Kirkpatrick, head of strength and conditioning at Sales Sharks, and James Leinhardt, CEO at Levitex Foams Limited. So before we get to the agenda, one quick disclaimer, all of the information that's going to be provided in this presentation is for informational purposes only. It doesn't constitute the providing of mental health advice. It's not intended to be a substitute for independent professional psychological or psychiatric advice, diagnosis or treatment. But hopefully you will find uh, more than a few things to take away and find useful and implement into life. Here's a look at how the next hour or so is going to pan out for you. Sergei Belosov will be discussing what Acronis is doing to adapt to the pandemic. We'll then hear from Dan Sims, who'll be discussing the science of sleep, trends in sleep, and how and why we often overlook the importance of sleep and recovery as a society. Then we have John and James. They'll be having a look at the importance of recovery and share some more practical tips on sleep management as well. So let's not waste any more time. I'm gonna hand you over to Sergey Belosov, the CEO and founder of Acronis. He's also the CEO and founder of the Schaufhausen Institute of Technology, an international research-led institute located in Switzerland. So over to you, Sergey. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, very glad to be here. Let me share my screen. Um, it's a standard presentation. I think many of you have seen it, but Acronis is a cyber protection software company, which is a artificial intelligence powered cyber protection, cyber cloud and cyber platform. We are headquartered in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, and we have a second international headquarter in Singapore. Um, uh, it uh, was always our strategy to have a dual headquarter uh, to provide um, dual protection to our customers. Perhaps for the first time, it uh, actually made uh, sense is during this pandemic because even though both Switzerland and Singapore reacted to this pandemic um, uh, relatively well, they reacted very differently and at a different time. And being in two places allowed us to be uh, better and more um, uh, active for our partners and customers 
we are a medium-sized company. Uh, we're growing rapidly, even during the pandemic, we see a very good growth. Uh, and, and in some areas, our business grows faster. I'll talk about this in a moment. Uh, we are very present in almost every uh, large company. We have 50,000 uh, partners and we serve over 500,000 businesses, large businesses, small businesses, and medium businesses. Uh, we also provide software for prosumers. Um, uh, we are <coughs> call ourselves global local present. We believe that it's very important for protection to be present in every location for our customers, especially during this pandemic. We realize that our production infrastructure may be somewhere else, but for protection, we need to have something in our country and perhaps in our state and perhaps in our region and perhaps in our uh, city. Digital world um, is uh, everything around us. Digital world is really um, uh, becoming part of every uh, business and every personal process, but it has major challenges. Digital workloads are very mission critical and yet uh, they are very fragile. It's very easy to delete bits. It's very easy to copy bits. And there are these five challenges in protecting uh, digital world. Uh, one of them is complexity. There is very large number of systems to protect already today, and that's gonna uh, grow more than 10 times in, in 10 years. Um, there are also um, a very large amount of data already today to be protected, and it will grow also over 10 times in 10 years. Just one uh, autonomous car um, is uh, capable of generating four terabytes of data per day and as such more than one petabyte of data per year. Uh, security um, is a major concern. In the cybercrime is industrialized and organized. Um, artificial intelligence is used both by good guys and bad guys. And there is almost no way for you to avoid security exploits. Um, and then the other thing which is becoming very clear that it's important and we see that it will become even more important in the coming years is privacy. You have to be protected, including from those wonderful platform vendors like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple, because your privacy is under constant attack. And not only there are these four things protecting digital workloads, but also digital workloads now are mission critical. Without IT, we cannot function, especially during pandemic like this. We believe that the only solution uh, to uh, such complexity cost and such challenges is integrated and autonomous cyber protection with minimal participation of humans uh, being able to operate in any requirement. And that is our mission in Acronis to protect all data, all applications and all systems. And we believe that it's only possible if we take a holistic approach and we provide a single software which will integrate protection uh, from the standpoint of safety so that nothing is lost. There is always a copy for recovery. Protection from standpoint of accessibility, you can access your IT infrastructure from anywhere at any time. Protection from standpoint of privacy, you can control who has access to your data and you can give and take away rights. Authenticity, you can make sure that your data wasn't modified and of course security. In a single package is the only way to deal with uh, complexity and to be easy to use, to deal with cost and uh, be acceptable uh, cost in such way that you still protect all of the infrastructure, security, control and reliability. We believe that there are a lot of similarities between biological and computer threats. And we sort of think about our uh, uh, MSP partners, managed service provider partners as uh, doctors for um, uh, computer threats. With um, this pandemic, we've learned the hard way that in order to stay protected, we need to make sure that we do prevention. So prevention is ultimately what stops the um, rise in cases and rise in deaths, vaccination, good hygiene, uh, social distancing. You need to do detection, super important. Uh, without detection, it's very difficult to understand what is going on and uh, who needs to be cured and who needs to be especially uh, much quarantined. Response, um, so of course, um, that is what uh, the countries who have low number of death cases 
uh, or able to learn how to deal with the disease, how to cure the patients according to their risk profile. Recovery, um, again, another super important thing, recovery is needed. From time to time, you will have cases of um, uh, which require long and difficult recovery. And then finally, you need to do forensic to enable prevention, detection, response, and recovery. That is very, very similar with um, uh, computer threats. And that is uh, what um, we uh, believe we provide with a chronic cyber protection. And not only for security for the bad guys, but also for other aspects of a chronic cyber SAPAS, safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security. All of them need prevention, detection, response, recovery in forensic in one package. And so ultimately, Acronis provides autonomous, integrated, and modular sub cyber protection. Uh, really, it is just one product, one service for Acronis customers. Acronis Cyber Protect, which is uh, safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security uh, for um, a digital workload of the customer through Acronis Cyber Cloud, which is used by Acronis partners uh, to offer cyber protection to Acronis customers, primarily managed service providers, also managed security service providers, hosting service providers, cloud service providers, and network service providers. And today we have around 10,000 service providers in our network. We are building this to over 30,000 by the end of 2022. Acronis Cyber Platform allows developers to modify Cyber Cloud and modify Cyber Protect uh, to uh, make it broader and make it better and easier. And we are targeting uh, very aggressively to certify developers. We are launching new certification programs for developers with Acronis Cyber Academy. Acronis Cyber Infrastructure and Systems, which is very important part of our promise to be global local and to enable you to be protected on your territory, in your country, in your region. And Acronis Cyber Services, which are closing every gap in our offering from the standpoint of mindshare, expertise, reach, breath, and most important, Acronis Cyber Fit Academy. Uh, this um, uh, uh, th th this uh, last quarter was very exciting quarter for us because for the first time, we launched our flagship product in full, Acronis Cyber Protect. Acronis Cyber Protect is, first of all, the most uh, secure, easy, and reliable backup. So it's better backup than any backup. Even though we keep telling our customers and partners and backup is dead, backup is simply dead as a separate product. It is, however, an important feature of cyber protection. And in Acronis Cyber Protect, you have better backup because you have proactive protection, you have active protection, not just reactive protection. And in all counts, we have um, enhancements in the way how the backup operates. For example, in proactive protection, we can, uh, uh, we can remove um, malware from the backups and we can assess um, the env uh, environment to prevent potential downtime. In active protection, we can switch on continuous data protection at any point of time if we suspect that they're going to be a failure. And we also always make the product better for partners. In addition to that, we designed the product specifically for MSP partners, which hopefully a lot of you who are listening to uh, me today are. It's designed to for an integration with RMM, PSA, and security suites, which is a primary things which our partners use to manage uh, IT infrastructure for our customers. Um, it includes security in the product, but it actually integrates with third party very, very easily. It includes some very basic management features but as a result of it, it provides a perfect integration environment for um, a third party uh, uh, remote uh, management and monitoring tools um, and, and in native integration with uh, ConnectWise Automate, Casia VSA and Atera from the box. And we have a very aggressive roadmap of building integrations with top 15 RMM and top 15 PSA vendors within the next six months. And of course, we also integrate with PSA, which is an important part for um, uh, uh, making business processes of our partners effective. Now, the most exciting thing in the product, it is this first time integrated product, which includes complete uh, world-class, top-notch integrated security, which is already today the best for the end customer. But uh, as we move forward before the end of the year, it will include such unique features like as data loss prevention, endpoint detection and response, zero trust assessment and management, and other components of the security. Um, and 
the important thing is that some of those features or operate in a uniquely great way because they are only possible uh, in, in this integrated offer where you integrate safety, accessibility, authenticity, uh, privacy, and security. Now, there are a number of unique capabilities um, with the product which are only um, uh, possible with this product. First of all, we reacted to COVID and we provide unique protection for collaboration applications such as Zoom, WebEx, and Teams. You can uh, not worry about uh, collaborating even in a very large group if you use our product. In an upcoming release, we'll allow you to launch those uh, uh, collaboration tools in a separate isolated container. Second of all, we do such unique things like we predict a hard disk failure with our product, so you don't need to just uh, catch the broken computer and then uh, recover after uh, a stress, but you can replace hard disk pro proactively. There are a number of unique security features such as artificial intelligence based in injection detection, entropy analysis combats most um, uh, dangerous ransomware. In fact, today, we have zero failure with, with uh, ransomware for our customers. And, and there are other things related to efficiency, which are only possible because we integrated uh, safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security in a single product, such as antivirus scans, deep antivirus scans and backups, and, and whitelisting applications and backups. And again, always we are worrying about uh, productivity of our partners. Now, um, it, it is uh, important that with this product, we just announced a new uh, price list and new editions, um, which are again, uh, perhaps most relevant for our partners. We have now a chronic cyber protect essentials editions, which is affordably priced cyber protection with essential backup capabilities. So it's replacement for your old school, imperfect disintegrated security products. It includes required functionality for backup to enable unique capabilities. Protection for service of hosting, um, uh, customers, uh, we also provide free cloud storage now with the product because we believe the only right protection is to be protected both locally and in the cloud. Uh, extremely competitive price list and even with that price list we are launching very, very aggressive uh, uh, promotion from the very start of the launch. So this is just comparison of editions. Uh, all of you will get the slides. Most important is to um, uh, uh, think that we now have a completely com complete competition for any security product in essentials. We have an extremely good, better backup than um, Acronis uh, Cyber Backup Cloud in Acronis Cyber Protect Cloud Standard, and we have um, enterprise level capabilities in Acronis Cyber Protect Advanced. With that, I wanted to stop on just a couple more points. One of them is that with um, uh, uh, the launch of Acronis Cyber Platform, we're putting significant uh, effort on Acronis Cyber Services and CyberFit Academy, uh, which is services education and consulting, primarily for our partners, but also for our customers, uh, including cyber protection services, including cyber protect operating systems, centers, something which our competitors may call uh, SOC, we call it CPOC, because we believe that it's not so important why your IT infrastructure will not be working. It has to work no matter what. It has to work regardless of whether it, the computer is broken, regardless of whether there is, um, uh, there is a potential break of privacy or something was modified with or without knowledge and you didn't notice it. We also offer professional services, including to our sport partners. And, and the major uh, focus for this year is Acronis Cyber Fit Academy we actually increased um, the resources in this area by the factor of five. We um, are implementing the most modern in the world, transparent, interactive, uh, and adaptive uh, learning management system. And there will be uh, lots and lots of um, uh, very um, engaging and um, short and long trainings and certifications available for customers and partners. We also build a new generation uh, Acronis Cyber Community Partner Program uh, with exclusive uh, club for premium partners. We definitely hope that a uh, vast majority of our partners will be able to uh, join the club uh, and many of them will be part of the premium membership club. Um, well, with that, I, I wanted to stop a little bit on, on um, uh, what um, uh, we did during the uh, COVID time. So, and what do we do um, uh, um, after uh, COVID time? So, first of all, 
uh, we implemented um, uh, a lot of different things on office hygiene. You know, it's the generally unprecedented time, so it's not so clear what's going to happen with the uh, offices in the future, but we, um, uh, in Acronis, um, uh, supplied masks, sanitizing gels, wipes, disinfecting lamps in every office. We increased the number of cleanings by the factor of three or five. We put the social distancing marks. I think uh, it's important to worry about um, your employees and partners holistically. So we also implemented guidelines on getting safely to the office, um, uh, protective gear for commuters, uh, food and orders to the office. Uh, we um, only um, allow our, our employees to do essential business travel. Of course, uh, travel policies right now are confusion all over the world. Uh, confusion even for me, I, I travel the least amount of time in the 28 years of business career uh, of mine. And um, we, of course, um, done a lot of um, work um, in improving productivity at, uh, in, in, in home offices uh, and, and uh, scheduling presence in the office. Um, we also invested in um, productivity at home um, efficient communication, uh, alignment, performance, and measurement. I have to tell you that, unfortunately, for me, even though I liked our blue, navy blue uh, Cronus uh, cyber offices a lot, I was unpleasantly surprised to find out that the productivity of Acronis overall grew 15 to 30 uh, percent with um, working from home. Not sure how sustainable it is, because of course people do need to meet and communicate from time to time. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, the working from home is not bad at all. Now, one other thing which we tell to our partners and customers is that um, now there will be um, much less restrictions. And, and that's exactly the time when you should not lower your guard. In fact, this slide was made in April. And I think in May, a lot of countries and a lot of states and a lot of regions lower their guard and we can see what happened. And we believe that there are these five things uh, to, to worry about. One, one of the things is uh, uh, it's important to maintain in business and to save money and to make money. And we believe for our partners, we are the best opportunity to um, grow your profit margins, grow your revenue, um, uh, keep your customer churn low, especially with the chronic cyber protect. This uh, crisis is definitely a major crisis for um, uh, human life and human health, but it's much more of a crisis for economy and we're only seeing the beginning of such result. Then um, we suggest that it's important to not to forget to maintain um, hygiene at all times. It's just a good um, uh, habit to wash your hands and avoid touching your face and use a sanitizer and observe social distancing. It doesn't matter uh, whether it's about COVID or it's about um, infectious tuberculosis or it's about some other uh, dangerous viruses. Being sick is not good. Um, then it's important to, of course, take care of your health. And I think uh, my colleagues um, will uh, well talk about uh, how it's important to sleep and to recover after me. Uh, for me, this was an amazing period. I've actually uh, uh, brought back my weight as of uh, 20 years ago. And I've exercised on the average uh, several hours per day while working. In my offices everywhere, I've installed different uh, new generation uh, machines. And amazing thing, when you work from home, there is nothing which prevents you from working and exercising. In fact, after I finish this uh, speech of mine, I will stand on an elliptic machine and will walk for probably 33 minutes uh, while listening to the rest of the presentation. I, I do think it's important uh, to not uh, keep your guard low and to keep uh, being prepared with supplies I think uh, it's always possible there will be a second wave and it's always possible that the virus will mutate and the wave could be more deadly or uh, more dangerous for health otherwise. And, and so keeping supplies uh, for any kind of attack like this uh, by biological virus is good. And then of course, it's important to stay protected uh, from the cyber standpoint. Just look at what happened with Garmin. I'm sure there is many users of Garmin and you know, with Acronis Cyber Protect, um, recovery would take minutes, not days and not weeks. And, and these attacks, uh, they will happen more and more often because it's just a new reality, uh, especially with um, quarantine and social distancing. It's much easier to do cyber crimes than to do physical crime. 
and we're going to have much more um, cyber crime happening. And, and the best way to stay protected is to do uh, uh, prevention, detection, response, recovery, and forensic, all of it, not just one area uh, of the protection, and to worry about safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security at the same time, not just worry about security, for example. And another thing to remember is that from what I know about the attacks with Garmin, they have happened to ha happen on endpoints. And so a lot of the large businesses, a lot of the partners, they worry about protecting server infrastructure, uh, protecting the data center, but not worried about protecting homes, protecting mobile, protecting desktops of their employees. Everything needs to be protected from all the five um, vectors of protection in all the five ways and at, at all times. Not um, protecting uh, one of the workloads is like uh, uh, leaving an open hole uh, in, in a space station. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is, uh, it will be bad enough. With that, I wanted to announce this new initiative, uh, which we launched together with Acronis Cyber Protect, uh, where you can check your cyber feed level. This is free utility, which you can get from go.acronis.com.score. Uh, it will access your device and will actually uh, 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 tell you what is your cyber score. Um, with that, uh, we uh, will uh, provide CyberFit uh, score for workloads and for your infrastructure, CyberFit score for customers, CyberFit score for partners and how well they can help to protect customers and their workloads, and also even CyberFit score for countries on how well we are ready to help partners, customers, and workloads. Now with that, uh, there is a last point of my presentation, which is about CyberFit sports. Uh, which is a unique initiative we are, which we are running in Acronis, which allows us to engage with uh, partners uh, like um, those who will speak after me about doing um, uh, sleep and doing recovery uh, with uh, teams like Liverpool, who is a champion um, uh, this year, and, and hopefully there will be European Championship. He will be European champion as well as it was last year. Arsenal, Manchester City, Williams, New Racing, Venturi, and many others. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Sergey. Very interesting. You've certainly been uh, busy yourself and the Acronis team, haven't you, over the last uh, few months uh, in particular. Good luck on the uh, elliptical train. I was fascinated. 33 minutes is uh, very specific. Uh, I look forward to finding out how it goes uh, when we catch up a little bit later. It is indeed you know, so important, isn't it? Now more than ever, perhaps. To, take care of each other and in order to take care of each other we need to take care of ourselves first and we're all going to learn during this event just how to stay productive and efficient and adapt to post-covid life um, here's a, a reminder of what's to come over the next hour or so a look at the uh, agenda please do keep your questions coming in through the the zoom interface uh, but now it's my great pleasure to introduce dan sims dan's currently a performance coach working in formula one his passion lies in endurance sports representing great britain at age group triathlon and competing in the 2015 ironman world championships in hawaii uh, i not too long ago actually saw dan uh, putting formula one driver roman grosjean through his paces uh, on the beach in monaco ahead of one of the races uh, he knows what he's talking about this man uh, over to you dan thanks very much amanda and uh thank you sergey um yeah i'm a garmin user so uh i can uh yeah, understand the uh tricks and uh the uh problems we have with uh, with cybercrime it was uh, slightly frustrating for a, a few weeks um for myself on a different topic on to uh sleep and um, I'm going to chat about the science of sleep and about why we kind of often overlook it um, in recent times. Um, I'm a sports coach, a performance coach by trade, and it's one of the most important facets of um, well-being and performance that um, plays a massive part on our um, performance, whether that's sport or within a business setting. 51% of the world are not sleeping enough, according to a global relaxation report in 2018 and I want to see if we can explore why this is the effect of this and why we should prioritize sleep and the value of sleep more and how can we sleep better so I'm going to aim to do that over the next 20 minutes or so 
in the last hundred years, sleep has dropped from nine hours down to seven hours. So we've lost two hours of sleep in the last hundred years. That's not a very long time span. And it can be associated with electricity and the commercialization of the light bulb in the 1920s. We're competing with smartphones. Even the CEO of Netflix openly admits that he's competing with sleep um, with, with Netflix and other um, entertainment um, uh, apps and systems. We're being fed the wrong information from key figures um, in the media. As a result, 20 to 30 percent of Americans get less sleep than six hours um, per night. And in much of Asia and Japan, it's even, even worse than this and even lower than this. So what, Arnie might say, he only needs six hours. And a lot of people say this, they say, I feel absolutely fine on, on six hours sleep. Well, they've done studies on this. And sleep takes place over 90 minute cycles. Now we have periods of slow wave sleep where the body rejuvenates itself. And this is more for the physical side of things. And we have periods of REM or rapid eye movement sleep, which is where the brain regenerates and recovers. Now, if we sleep six hours instead of eight hours, we're missing a big chunk of this rapid eye movement sleep, this sleep where we dream, where we consolidate our thoughts, um, our brain rejuvenates, um, and where we make connections and, and develop our learning. So we're missing a huge chunk, which potentially um, can be quite devastating for mental health and for cognitive performance. But you may say again, you feel fine at six hours and you may be used to operating um, after six hours sleep. Well, they've done studies on this as well. And over um, four different groups, they looked at zero hours of sleep, four hours of sleep, six and eight hours uh, for two weeks for the, the, the latter three groups and just for three nights for the four people only sleeping, uh, well, not sleeping at all um, for, for three nights running. And they found the following three things, that sleep depth is cumulative. So after one week of um, the six hour group sleeping, um, only six hours, 25% of them were falling asleep at random times during the day. The second thing they found is that sleep depth impairs our performance. So for, as you'd expect for people not sleeping um, at all, um, their reaction times got worse over the course of the three nights as were the case in the four and the six hour group um, and the eight hour group stayed about the same. Even if you're sleeping six hours a night, which people perceive to be okay and feels okay, well, after two weeks of doing this, it can be the equivalent of, of being awake for 48 hours. So you have the same reaction times as being awake for 48 hours. So we're not performing optimally. And the dangerous thing is we don't realize this is even happening because as you can see from this graph, is that after a couple of nights, our perception of sleepiness starts to flatten out. So if you look at the six hour group and the four hour group, we actually feel okay. Nothing changes after, after two or three nights. We get used to this feeling of being, of being sleepy. So sleep impacts our performance and we don't even realize it. Sleepiness increases accidents but 30% um, increase in work accidents happen at night. 20% of vehicle accidents are related to sleepiness. So sleepiness is comparable to being drunk. After 19 hours of being awake, and if we've had a long day and got to bed late, we're, that's, that's doable. Um, blood alcohol concentration was, was 0.05%, um, which is legally drunk in, in some countries. On the flip side, good sleep can improve speed and accuracy in physical performance. And this is something within sport that we're really keen on. Um, so 10 hours per night led to basketball shooting percentage increasing by 9% um, and an increase in sprint speed as well. This is some personal data um, of a athlete of mind, a young um, motorsport driver in Formula 3, actually sponsored by Red Bull and, and Honda. Um, named Yuki Tsunoda. Um, he's now in Formula 2. 
Um, and we looked at his sleeping patterns and his reaction times because like a typical 18 year old and someone who had just moved from Japan to Europe, he's still a little bit on the Japanese time. Uh, he's, he likes his gaming, his, his esports and uh, his FIFA. And uh, he's, he's speaking to his friends in, uh, in Japan on a different time zone as well. So he didn't think this was too much of a problem and I set out to prove him wrong. So we looked at his sleep time, we looked at his sleep quality we gave that a sleep effectiveness score by combining the two. And then we looked at um, uh, the reaction times, average of three reaction times. Um, and after a few weeks, you could see quite clearly that when he started to focus on his sleep and got his best sleep for a while, early at night, uninterrupted, he recorded some of his best reaction times by 0.2 of a second and even half a second compared to his worst um, time. And the low scores, so poor quality, lower sleep scores for him, long day of travel, things like that, um, you can see this, the reaction times go down. Uh, for a race car driver, that's obviously extremely important. Um, and any dip in the reaction times is, is equivalent to lost time on the track. So this, um, this hit home, this message with him, um, and it's the same in terms of cognitive skills um, within the workplace as well. We will be sharper with better quality sleep. It also helps reduce injury um, linked to um, fighting information, in, inflammation um, and uh, repairing um, muscular damage um, within, uh, within elite athletes. Low sleep also impacts our health and sleep depression affects our immune system. Uh, Sergey mentioned this before about having our immune system as strong as possible in current times. Um, and I think uh, it's a real message. We're, we're at home, a lot of the things we can control um, and if our immune system is taking a dip, we're less likely to fight off um, diseases and, and flus. Um, people sleeping less than seven hours are almost three times more likely to develop a cold than those sleeping eight hours or more. Shift work as well is extremely dangerous uh, for the body. Um, shifting your circadian rhythm and working more at night um, uh, than in the, uh, in the daytime has been linked to being more carcinogenic, so more common to, uh, to get cancer um, in humans. They did a study on nurses um, who were working um, at night shifts, and there was a 32% risk of breast cancer um, within nurses, which is quite a scary thought. Um, and again, it's linked to the circadian rhythm, it's linked to not sleeping properly because we're trying to sleep during the day rather than at night. Sleep also affects our memory and our psychological health. So there's been discoveries recently. We're working with a, uh, an association called Race Against Dementia, and they study, um, we support four scientists who study um, Alzheimer's and dementia. And during the day, these toxins, these proteins, the tau protein and the amyloid beta peptides build up during the day. And overnight with sufficient sleep, we're able to clear that. Now, if we don't sleep properly, this keeps building up. And these two toxins are very prevalent in people with Alzheimer's. Um, they study brain tissue, and this is what they find. They find an increased percentage of these. So Alzheimer's, dementia, it's cognitive disorders. If you imagine um, you're exercising and you're not giving your body enough rest, well, then there's going to be a lot of fatigue. There's going to be injuries occur. This is the equivalent. If you're not giving your brain enough rest, well, then we're going to create fatigue and we're going to create injuries effectively within the brain. It can also affect our food choices. If we've only had a few hours um, sleep a night, then we wake up feeling fatigued. We're more likely to reach for high energy, high calorie food um, and sleeping less than seven hours has been linked to the probability of obesity by, by 6%. So some simple advice I would give you is really give sufficient time and attention to your sleep and recovery. It enables your mind and perhaps even more importantly, uh, sorry, enables your body and perhaps even more importantly, your mind um, to recuperate and regenerate and perform optimally. Um, so think about your own sleep patterns. Think about what you do. Think about how much you're getting. See if you can um, uh, give yourself a, a sleep effectiveness score each night uh, and judge whether you're, you're getting enough. Um, I'm going to go through some, some guidelines and some principles of better sleep um, to see if you can take these forward into your, um, uh, into your own life.
So principle number one, quantity and consistency. Aim for 7.5 to nine hours of sleep. Now this is really important. Sleep cycles are 90 minutes. The guidelines at the moment are seven to nine, but I would encourage you to go for seven and a half. You get an extra full sleep cycle. So you're getting five sleep cycles rather than four and a half or four and a, three quarters. If you can do that, you're more likely to perform optimally during the day. So think about working faster and working more effectively rather than sleeping faster and squeezing your night. But why is it therefore hard to get up in the morning if you're getting enough sleep? Well, firstly, mostly down to not enough sleep for most people, but sometimes it can be for the wrong sleep cycle. And things that play a big part in this is consistency of bedtime. Um, if you keep changing the time you go to bed, you, your body doesn't get into a rhythm and it wakes up mid sleep cycle. It's not getting that full seven and a half or, or nine hours sleep. Um, and you can uh, feel, wake up feeling pretty, pretty groggy. So prepare your bedtimes, treat it with respect, aim for quality of sleep by reducing caffeine after lunch. Caffeine has a half-life, so it's still in the body for up to seven hours. So if you're having a coffee at four or five, in the, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, seven hours later, 11 or 12 o'clock, and you can't get to sleep, well, there's, there's no surprise with that. So try and limit it. I have a three o'clock stop of caffeine um, so that it's out of my system by by 10 or 11 o'clock and, uh, and I'm able to sleep with high quality. Alcohol is an interesting thing. A lot of people say they sleep better with alcohol. Maybe the perception of you falling asleep after a drink of alcohol um, is, is higher um, and it sedates you, but it doesn't restore you overnight. So we, do, uh, we use this first beat analysis, which is essentially you put on the heart that analyzes heart rate variability which is a indication of, of stress um, and the nervous system, the type of nervous system that you're in. So the red here shows effectively high levels of stress and the green shows recovery, low levels of stress, regeneration. Now, after drinking four units of alcohol in the evening, um, they went to bed at 11, 30, 12 o'clock, quite late. Um, it looked like they went to sleep and got some recovery instantly because they went to sleep straight away. Then the body's up and getting disrupted by the alcohol in their system until four o'clock in the morning. And they're only getting any regenerative sleep for potentially three hours, okay, which is clearly not enough. Try and turn your devices off as early as possible. It can have a similar effect to, to alcohol. It can trick the body into thinking that it's daylight again. And instead of going into that regenerative state on the previous slide, you actually stay awake and, and it's harder to um, go back into the recovery mode. So it suppresses melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. So we're designed to sleep when the light goes down, the sun sets. So try and dim the lights, try and reenact that in your own home if possible. Manage stress, again, similar sort of effects that we see on the, uh, on the heart rate variability and, and the first beat scores. Um, if there's stress in the body going to sleep, well then cortisol is high when we want it to be low at nighttime. Um, uh, and it's offsetting uh, melatonin. Um, ways you can do this, we mentioned, optimize your bedroom. Aim to sleep in a cool, quiet, and dark environment. If you can, put the phone in the other room. If you can, switch the lights down low and try not to have a TV in your room as well. So our brains, like our body, need time to rest. We can't go out and physical train all day. Otherwise, you're gonna pick up injuries, you're gonna get um, chronically fatigued. The equivalent of this with the brain is things like burnout uh, and depression and, and high stress. Um, so we need to schedule daytime recovery. And it's a change of mindset. Idle time is not a waste of time. So doing nothing or, or scheduling time to um, do some breathing techniques or, or do some yoga is, is not wasted time. This is good investment in your brain um, and in uh, your mental um, regeneration. If we don't, back to this slide, this person has zero recovery during the day and it becomes a lot of stress, a lot of load on the body. Over the course of several days, we can see from the data that there's this general decline in their starting level. So where they were here, possibly at the start of the week, a couple of nights where they're quite good recovering overnight, but there's this steep downward curve during the day where there's lots of stress. Now, if this continues for a long period of time, 
burnout is is absolutely the thing that they're going to go towards or even getting sick um just feelings of of uh, poor well-being and, and depressive type feelings as stress increases so we want this to be the reverse we want this to be super compensation we want you to build on each day and be able to adapt from the stimulus and the stress that you've had and the and the brain can adapt to that stress if we give it enough time to rest um, if you think about learning that's exactly how the brain adapts we learn languages we recover it consolidates that overnight and we build on that think about what sort of nervous system you're in so we have these two nervous systems fight or flight and rest and digest a lot of us found find ourselves this lion in in the world and we're in this fight or flight system all the time and that is linked to a real decline in um, well-being over over long term the details of the two nervous systems so you have this sympathetic this lion nervous system now it gets us ready for action it prepares us for things but it's harmful if it's chronically activated so it can cause increased stress and it can cause feelings of depression and it can affect um, our sleep and therefore um, uh, things like Alzheimer's and, uh, and things like that moving forward. Parasympathetic, this is activities that um, uh, make us relax. Um, uh, yoga, breathing techniques, reading your book, things like that. Maintains balance in our body, gives our brain a chance to recover and rest, which is essential. Corporate fatigue is a case caused by instances like this so you have this downward trend of your body resources ending in um, this low area at the end of the week now most of us find ourselves recovering or trying to recover and catch up with sleep during the the weekend um, and during our, our our personal time or we get to a point where we can't take any more and we need a break and a holiday or worse we get sick and we lose time um, working so I'd encourage yourself to really take sleep and recovery seriously. Um, and this quote by, by Tim Crater, the author, is uh, it's very prevalent. Idleness is not just a vacation or an indulgence or a vice. It is indispensable to the brain as vitamins are to the body. So think about that in terms of from a physical point of view. Lack of vitamins can cause various health issues. Well, actually, lack of rest and recovery can cause a whole host of health issues as well. So we need to take sleep and recovery a lot more seriously. So balance your stress and recovery. These will be my final bits of advice for you. Take time to regularly relax and find idle time that helps you switch off and helps your, your brain rejuvenate. Schedule daytime breaks and relaxing evening activities. Have at least one day off per week where you're resting and you're not thinking about work and balance stress and recovery and listen, listen to your body on that. To summarize, what have we learned in the last 15, 20 minutes? The importance of sleep and recovery, I hope I've made as clear as possible. It enables your mind and body to regenerate and to perform optimally. Sleep and recovery is vital for your health and well-being and performance. We shouldn't overlook it anymore. We can improve productivity in the workplace, decrease the amount of um, days that people are off sick if we just get this right, sleep and recovery. Three simple steps. Aim to sleep seven and a half hours is an absolute minimum. If you can be in bed for eight hours, that is ideal because you're most likely going to get those seven and a half hours as a minimum. Um, and even that, some studies say that that is still not quite enough, depending on your job and the, and the cognitive demand on you. Learn to switch off during the day as well. Have periods of recovery. Learn to switch off at night. Um, and that means switching off TV and, and blue light, as well as switching off from um, stressful demands of work switch those emails off and, and deal with them the next day so learn to balance your stress and your recovery we can't always be in this high stress we can't always be the lion fighting in the world we need time to to be that that cat and recover and rest it's been a pleasure speaking to you about sleep if you have any questions i'm going to be around at the end um, but i really hope that's given you some good backgrounds um, for the next uh, following presentations and um, I look forward to listening to those. So thank you all. Thanks so much, Dan. Uh, fascinating stuff and you know, lessons that more important than ever really to, to try and remember as we've got the kind of school home 
office life all combined uh, into one uh, for, for so many of us. Um, let's just have a look at uh, the rest of today's agenda to keep us all reminded uh, where we are. That was Dan Sims, of course, who uh, has spent a large part of his career working in motorsport, Formula, Formula One uh, in particular. Let me introduce you now to John Kirkpatrick. Uh, he's a former rugby player for St. Helens, London Broncos and Widnes Vikings, a rugby league with over 100 professional appearances. He retired in 2008 to study strength and conditioning and gained a master's from the University of Salford. And he is currently head of strength and conditioning at Sail Sharks, having been at the club for eight seasons. Uh, John, over to you. Well, thanks very much, Amanda. Um, first of all, uh, can I uh, thank Acronis for inviting me on the web seminar today? It's a real privilege to be here. And also, I really enjoyed the uh, the chats from Sergei and uh, and Dan Sims. Some really good information there. So uh, thanks very much, guys. Okay, so my short presentation is just about the importance of recovery uh, and uh, and practic uh, practical on sleep management. Okay, next slide. Okay, so why is rugby so important? Uh, why is recovery so important in a Premiership rugby player? Um, a lot of you guys won't know much about rugby. Okay, so. In a short statement, rugby union is a full contact multi sprint sport that is played for 80 minutes by athletes who can weigh up to 140 kilos. Recovery between games is absolutely paramount. Okay, so there's a, a wide discrepancy between, uh, say, a scrum off and a, a prop in rugby union. You know, we've got Fafta Clerk at the club who's, who's well recognised as one of the world's best number nines. He weighs in around about 75, 80 kilos all the way. Uh, up to the end of the scale with uh, with some of our props who are 130, 135 kilos. Um, so, as you can see, it's very important for these guys to recover in between games. And I know a lot of people watching or viewing today won't really understand or know much about rugby. Some will, some won't. Um, so, I've just got a short video here just to show you uh, exactly what these guys go through on an 80-minute game um, week in, week out. Next slide. So obviously watching the video will give you a small snapshot of, of, of what these guys go through. Obviously, as I mentioned before, between wingers and props, there's a, a wide discrepancy of what these guys bring uh, physically to the table. Um, so how do we quantify what each player goes through within an 80-minute game? Next slide. Okay, so, so just some stats for you. I mean, the way, the way we do it is, is we have a, a fantastic analysis team at Sail Sharks. Um, and those guys um, look at things like tackles completed, carries, scrums, uh, breakdown, gay, uh, breakdown, gain line, um, gain line breaks, um, and the players can can access this information almost instantly, um, and the coaches obviously access it as well. From a strength conditioning point of view, what we do is we look at the, the GPS sort of stats and, and, and things we look at are, are sort of total meters, um, high speed uh, running meters, uh, max velocity. Um, acceler accelerations, decelerations, just so that we can really uh, understand what each individual player needs to uh, needs to have for recovery, because every game is different, uh, and as, a, as I've already stated, every every playing position is different. So just have a look at some uh, some of the stats um, that we provide the boys with. Is uh, so, for instance, in a, in a in a in a in a more intense game, some of these guys can run between 5k and 9k uh, for total duration. Um, high speed running meters in the games, more probably done by sort of wingers, fullbacks, 
your faster guys, maybe between 700 and 1,000 metres. Uh, max velocity, um, again, focusing with the wingers and the fullbacks. These guys run between 10.5 and 10.5 metres per second. Now, what does that mean in sort of layman's terms? Well, that's up to sort of 37.8 kilometres an hour, or in old money, 23.4 miles an hour. Um, again, in another intense game, accelerations are up to 70 times, and that's quantified and um, I'm over, over three metres per second. Decelerations up to 36 times, and again, that's uh, three metres per second decelerations. Next slide. And obviously the, the, the running duration, the running load on these guys is something we have to monitor carefully when we're recovering, but we, you've got to really look at the sort of impacts these guys take as well. So um, tackles per game, we, we've seen up to 23 uh, tackles in a game, ball carries per game up to 18, and then collisions, uh, you know, in total 59 per game. So it really is the case that after, after these guys, guys play on sort of Friday, a Saturday or a Sunday, it really is sometimes like being in a bit of a car crash for the, for, for, for the guys when they come in on Monday on Monday morning. Next slide. And there we go. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we're up to 960. So, actually, in actual fact, you, you were right. Our pack it, uh, currently is 960 kilos. So, you can imagine two packs going uh, head to head. Uh, the other pack, similar weight. Uh, you can really see the sort of forces uh, and also understand the sort of strength and condition these guys need to undertake to be able to withstand these forces. Um, not, not, not just in game situations, but uh, in, tra in the training weeks as well. Next slide. So, how, how we schedule our training to maximise recovery during the during pre-season period. Okay, so next slide. So the best way for me is a strength and conditioner. Obviously, I've got to work with the coaches closely. But the best way for me to try and uh, keep the uh, recovery days uh, as best I can is, is, to, is to actually manage the schedule, okay? So don't worry too much about the content that's, that's in, the, in the sessions there. It's more to do with how the days look. So day one on the Monday, it will be our installation day, okay? So it'll be about learning. Um, we'll do uh, some speed and agility work there. Uh, and after that, we'll do some, some, some lower some lower leg weights. Um, but, it, but for the guys, it, it's, a, it's a fairly laid back day in terms of, you know, the amount of uh, amount we're asking them to do. Our second day will then be uh, our short and fast day. And we will include within that, obviously, they'll do upper body weights in the morning, but we'll include within that uh, conditioning to increase high speed uh, running meters. So a lot, of the, a lot of the things we see in games in terms of high speed running meters are quite hard to achieve sometimes within just rugby drills. And obviously the rugby coaches have got their mind just set on, uh, you know, skill levels, all that sort of stuff. So it's up to us to really sort of um, make sure we're hitting the, the targets we want that we see in games. Um, so we'll, we'll often increase um, the, the, the running meters there by, by interjecting conditioning within that. After the two days on, we'll take a recovery day. And then on the third day, we'll, again, it'll be more of an installation day, but it'll be increased in terms of its intensity. So we'll be making sure uh, the squad know the, know the job roles under a slightly increased um, uh, pressure. The last day is uh, almost like our game day. Obviously, in pre-season, we don't have any games. So our last day is, is where we really want to um, replicate what we see in games. Um, and we do this by, um, it's our multi-phase day. It's unstructured in nature to replicate intense periods in games, um, conditioning to increase fatigue, to test the players' skill and decision-making. Um, so often what we'll do is we'll condition the squad, um, two or three blocks of conditioning before we go into some rugby blocks, and uh, we'll give the coaches uh, parameters to make sure that we are uh, achieving the metres per minute we want, uh, we're achieving the high speed running we want. And if we don't get those, um, uh, those things boxed off within um, the sessions, then we will add conditioning at the end to make sure we achieve those things so that we're, we're, we're slowly but surely uh, preparing the boys for the, the game type situation. Okay, next slide. How we schedule training weeks to maximize recovery uh, in season, okay? So this is, this, is a, this is quite important in terms of making sure that the, uh, the squad arrives to the game in, in peak condition. Um, so again, um, on the Monday, we, uh, bear in mind, we would have played on the, the previous Saturday, um, three o'clock kickoff, okay? So Sunday would be home recovery options. And I'm gonna speak further in the presentation about your home recovery options. Um, and Monday is, is treated like a recovery day because we know it's still only 42 hours since, since the, the, the playing squad played. 
and we you can't get too much out of those guys. So on the Monday, it will be uh, weights for the, the lads who haven't played, but, re, but a recovery session um, for, for, the, for the guys who have played longer minutes. Um, on the Tuesday, uh, still uh, a detailed day, still, still not putting their foot down on the, on the pedal, so to speak. Um, learning, preview for, the, for preparing for the end of the week when we, we've got another game. Our Wednesday is our uh, short and fast day, okay? So we'll, we'll condition those guys again. Because it's kind of safe. It's safe to you now. We're we're sitting, we're, we're above 65 hours uh, post game, so we'll we'll work with some short conditioning blocks for the backs. We'll work on some speed for the forwards. We'll work on some off the ground, some contact conditioning drills, um, and that will prepare us and make sure we're ready to operate that game intensity come the weekend. Uh, recovery day, so the guys get to bring it back down again, and then our last training day before we play will be our captain's run day. And this will be fast and short, no more than 30 minutes, um, just really going through the plays, making sure that the timings uh, are, are right for everybody, everybody's job role, and then we will play on the, uh, on the Saturday. Next slide, please. Okay, so recovery protocols at sale. I've already mentioned and talked about how that scheduling has a massive impact on how we recover uh, the playing squad. Uh, it allows me to have control over that. But what do the guys do on their recovery days? Next slide. So this is, uh, this is the road to recovery uh, that we use at Sail Sharks. Okay, it's a 100-point system. And this will predominantly do, be done on the Sunday um, and the Monday. Um, and the guys are asked to, asked to get up to 100 points um, to make sure their recovery uh, is, 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 is done efficiently. Okay, so within that, we have compression garments. Uh, we have uh, family time, personal uh, downtime. Uh, I know Dan's already spoke about uh, how you've got to shut down and make sure you're uh, not in that sort of... Um, overhyped state all the time. Um, In-house hot and cold contrast baths. So again, the, the players can do, some of the players can do that at home. Full night sleep, massively important to sleep. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that further in a minute. Um, active recovery, 20 minute bike ride, yoga, Pilates, um, swim in the pool. Uh, foam, uh, foam roll, hockey ball, again, soft tissue work, really important uh, for, for the guys to do. Um, and then sauna protocol. And then following the match day, recovery sheets, uh, food and hydration. Again, I'm going to talk a little bit further about that as we go through. Okay, next slide. So just, uh, just to zoom in on, on, on some of the, the things the guys will do, uh, recovery protocols is your sauna. We ask them to do four times, uh, 4.5 minutes with intermittent cool showers. Regular fluids must be consumed to manage hydration levels. Uh, ice baths, eight minutes, 10 degrees, uh, 11 to 15 minutes, uh, 11 to 15 degrees. And then we use contrast, so just your hot and cold baths, uh, three times two minutes sauna, two minutes jacuzzi, two minutes cold shower baths. Um, you know, the guys, the guys use these, it makes, it makes the legs feel a lot fresher. Um, in the past, we have used uh, cryotherapy chambers, which, which uh, some have really rated and some have not rated at all. Um, but just currently, this is the, the protocol we're going with. Next slide. Okay, so three crucial focus areas uh, of recovery at Cell Sharks. Uh, nutrition, obviously a massive, a massive area. Uh, hydration, and then as, as, as Dan has gone to set a talk about, and James will talk about after me, uh, sleep, absolutely a massive area, and something that's probably not um, as, not, it's, been, it's been researched thoroughly, but it's, it's something that's not uh, at the forefront as much as the other two. Next slide. Okay, so once we've, once we've had a match day, uh, our recovery would, would go like this, okay? So with a uh, rapid intake of protein, carbohydrates, fluid, and anti antioxidants, we use a product called Cherry Active, um, and, it, you know, the antioxidants in there helps the muscles to recover um, after they've uh, partaken in an intense uh, either training session or, or game. Uh, recovery shake, protein, and carbs, 500 mils of water, and as I've already said, the Cherry Active. Uh, before bed, uh, continued stack on high protein again helps with the recovery of the, of the muscles um, pre, uh, and th things, uh, things like that uh, you know uh, granola, oats, muesli, yogurts, milk, cherry active again, uh, fresh berries, omega 3s. Uh, next day again high protein and carbs so trying to, trying to, um, uh, trying to get the players to, to really Regenerate in terms of you know the, the muscle damage that they've incurred from the game, um, and then foam roll, apply compression garments that we spoke about in the in the previous slide, 
Um, next slide. Okay, so some of our players at the club have different um, goals, as you, as, as, you, as you can see. There's a wide variety of, of body shapes uh, and weights within, within that squad, as I've already alluded to. So uh, our, our main focus is on uh, fat loss for some guys who need to really trim down a little bit to make sure they are as fit as we want to be. Guys who need to increase muscle mass. Um, and and we, 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 we know there's gainers. Uh, and, then, and then obviously guys who just need to maintain um, so we have a nutritionist working with the club and he's, uh, he's excellent at sort of really working one-on-one -on -one with these guys and making sure that the nutrition side of things um, really feed into the recovery as much as, as much as we can. Okay, next slide. Okay, so recovery, uh, immediate recovery, repair, refuel, rehydrate. Around the, the, the club at Carrington, we've got all these all this branded up so the squad constantly know uh, you know, the red is for repair, the, the yellow is refuel, the red is for rehydrate. And um, with con obviously continuous messaging, obviously continuous work with the, with the nutritionist, we're able to really get the guys in a good place, whether it be recovering from training or recovering from games. Um, it's such an important element that, that uh, you know, it's, it's one of our main key focuses at the club. Next slide. Okay, so how does sleep uh, integrate into the performance model. Uh, hydration, conditioning, mental preparation, nutrition. I've sort of touched on all the um, other four subjects. With the sleep, again, it, it's not my area specialty, but I'm lucky enough to obviously work with James uh, at Levitex, and he's done a fantastic job of, of, of talking to the academy, talking to some of the senior boys about how to uh, really optimise their sleep and, and to, 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 to use the sleep as a performance tool. Uh, next slide. So areas affected by poor, by, uh, poor patterns of sleep. Uh, Dan's already touched on this, but sort of things that we notice with our players within training, within games, um, reaction times, uh, motor function, uh, motivation, focus, stress regulation, muscle recovery, sprint performance, muscle glycogen, glucose metabolism, memory and learning, injury risk, illness rates, and unwanted weight gain. So every day before the, the squad come in for training, they fill out a well-being form. And on them forms, we, uh, we ask them their sleep quality and their sleep quantity. And every day they report that to us. And it just helps us manage, um, manage the athlete in terms of understanding why they might be down on some of these areas, why it may be affecting them. And we've found since we've been working with Levitex, it's been really, really good. And, 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 the, and the, the squad as a whole have improved on their... Uh, their sleep quality, we're, we're seeing much higher uh, RPE scores um, for, them, for them coming through. Next slide. Okay, so just some sleep tips uh, implemented, as I said, from Levitex at Sales Sharks. Uh, so a consistent sleep routine is, is, is crucial. And obviously with the academies and the, the junior sides, we try and implement this as early as we can so it becomes just part of their routine that they do. Uh, and we find as they come through the age, age ranges and into the first team, it, it's something that we don't have to sort of introduce them at that stage then. They're already doing it. Um, a good one for anybody, whether you're an athlete or not, reduce phone, television, tablet time in the evening. Uh, I know Dan's already touched on that. Um, reduce ca uh, caffeinated drinks. Again, um, I have a cut-off time at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when, when pretty much like Dan, when I uh, down, the, uh, down the coffee, uh, I don't have any more because uh, uh, I do find it affects me in the evening. Uh, manage stress by not working late into the evening. Now, with rugby players, it's a little bit different, but the amount of analysis that goes on nowadays is, uh, is, is huge. So you find, you find with the squad that they, they, they are watching the clips late into the evening. If they've had a particularly bad training session, it affects them in that way, and then they don't sleep, and then they come in the next day and they're reporting really bad well-being scores. Um, so that's something we try and push home to them as well. Um, when we're travelling away, we obviously we're, we're based in the north. Um, we spend quite a bit of time in, in London. Um, so when we on our away trips, uh, we tell all the squad to take their pillows with them, just to try and try and make it a bit more familiar in terms of the sleep pattern. And we also make sure that they've the, the, uh, adjusted the, the temperature in the room for 18 to 19 degrees for that optimal sleep. A um, couple of apps that the guys use that they've reported really really good things from. So a, couple of, uh, a few of the boys use. Um, uh, Headspace app. Uh, this app's based on sort of uh, uh, meditation. Um, tends to relax the guys before they go to sleep. They've reported really positive 
things from it. Uh, the win off app, breathing and relaxation, again, reasonably similar, reduces mental and cognitive stress, which is, which is as we know, is key in, in getting a good night's sleep. And then I touched on it earlier, but we had a period where we used cryotherapy and um, the squad did report on the whole much better sleep patterns when we're using that. Um, it's just difficult to get to get cryotherapy into your facility or to use it logistically. Uh, but it is something I do rate in terms of uh, affecting sleep patterns and, and, and uh, improving sleep quality. Next slide. Okay, so thanks very much for listening. Really enjoyed, uh, as I said, enjoyed the last two uh, presentations. I hope you took something from mine. It's something a little bit different. Um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, John. Uh, fascinating stuff, a real insight into uh, what it takes, or part of what it takes to, to put together a, a professional uh, rugby union side. And I, for one, the point I took was uh, optimal temperature for your room to sleep 18 to 19 degrees i always have that dilemma when i walk into a into a hotel room do i put the temperature up or, or put the temperature down and uh, if you speak to my mum and dad there's always a constant <laughs> battle going on between them as to whether it's going to be a hot room or a or a cold room um here's a reminder of what else we've got coming up uh three fantastic uh presentations still more to come uh, and time now to introduce you to a man who got a big build up there from john uh, james linehart he's ceo and founder of levitex foams and posture care and has dedicated his work life to helping critically injured and acutely acutely ill patients with their postural care in bed working with therapists throughout the NHS and local authorities James uh, saw the benefits of maintaining a good sleep posture firsthand and realized that nobody was talking about it and as I've said that I've realized I really must sit up uh, at my desk uh, please don't judge me uh, James over to you hi everyone nice to meet you all um, and as Amanda said, I, the majority of my career has been spent working with posture with uh, patients suffering with complex neurological conditions. And we've taken that science and, and, and brought it to the fore. And as John said, we are proudly the, uh, the official mattress and pillow providers to sale sharks. Um, next slide, please, sir. Uh, next. So. As John, as John rightly said, I'm uh, potentially nicked my slide, but we're going to forgive him. Um, <laughs> within the human performance model, we are considering um, not only hydration, nutrition, conditioning, and mental preparation, but also sleep. What we found most interesting uh, working in sports is that the players that we work with generally tend to know how much, how much uh, protein they've eaten of a day, uh, their hydration levels, conditioning, mental and physical conditioning is, is at the forefront but yet sleep generally tends to be the first thing, um, as Britain's strongest man told us, the first thing that people are likely to give up. Uh, next, please. And if we take it back to those unquestionable drives for the survival of our species, next, we are going to be talking about, uh, next please, Andre, eating, drinking, reproduction, and of course sleep all totally relevant and absolutely required for the continuation of our species. Next. So when I give the talks to the, uh, the sports clubs that we work with, um, these are the four questions we often ask, ask elite sportsmen. How often do you fast? And the answer is normally never. And when was the last time you didn't drink a glass of water all day? Uh, John will assure you that not one player at Sale Sharks has ever failed to drink a glass of water in a 24-hour period. And again, the last week, week you went without a week of training. So, okay, during lockdown, maybe there's been um, some alternative um, training regimes, but invariably, all those players are continuously staying fit. And they may or may not have a week off, but invariably, they're coming back to John. But yet you ask the question, and there's always a giggle in the room, how many of you have done an all-nighter? And invariably, whilst the coaches and managers and s coaches are staring at the players, they will, with sheepish looks, tell you that indeed, they probably had one relatively recently. Next. Andre? Next. Thank you. However, um, as Dan was saying earlier, the, the chronic sleep loss of two, per, two to four hours a day, we've seen from 1910 
uh, to 2010, as, as Dan said, uh, we've lost two hours a day. And, and we know that this can degrade performance to the same extent as 24 to 48 hours of sleep loss. Uh, next. Our background, as Amanda mentioned, is more in uh, the NHS and local authority. And if you were to go into any GP surgery, any hospital, uh, anywhere in the UK, you'll find pages and pages on the importance of healthy eating. There will be adverts about uh, reducing your sugar intake and eating five a day uh, and many other um, methods that the, the local authority and government and, and the powers that be will try and encourage us to improve our, sleep, uh, our eating habits. Next. And, and, and on, on a consumer level, you've all seen these men's health magazines with invariably with bodies that none of us uh, are likely to ever achieve. But the importance of healthy eating often plays a role on most of the front covers. Next. Same again with drinking water. National Health Service is very, very keen for you to drink water. Two to three litres a day. Um, and all this, all this advertisement, you'll see it if, like I say, if you go to your local GP, if you go to your local hospital, you will see these posters. Next, please. And yet, uh, and, and this is a book that I highly recommend. Um, I don't claim to be a sleep expert. Uh, our expertise is in posture, but Matthew Walker clearly is a sleep expert and says sleep is the single most effective thing we can do to reset our brain and body health each day. Mother nature's best effort yet to contra death. So pretty compelling stuff. Yet as we see, next slide please. That's as much as we get when it comes to the importance of sleep. And in fact, if you actually drill down those uh, posters, you'll find that the majority of them are relating to how to get some sleep when you've just had a newborn baby or ways to get your baby to sleep. But there is very little information in the public health service in and around the importance of sleep. Next, please. And so when it comes to elite sport, um, or even when we're talking about our, our, our more complex uh, patient groups, so uh, people who've suffered catastrophic brain injury, stroke survivors, those who suffer with conditions such as multiple sclerosis, really um, sleep is relevant to us all. It's not specific to sport, but we use it as a really good metaphor for today's um, session. Um, and, and these are the sorts of statistics that are coming out. You, you'll notice that there's a couple of statistics that I'm mentioning here uh, if, for example, athletes who sleep on average less than eight hours, 1.7 times more likely to have had an injury. Uh, something that Dan mentioned or something similar that Dan mentioned. And the reality is that even sort of simple work on going online and trying to find uh, uh, quotes in reference to sleep, there is very little out there. Um, next, please. And here just, here just highlights the point. So uh, I think Dan mentioned it before, five hours sleep and the likelihood of injury is, is, um, is 60, 60%. And as we go to nine hours of sleep, we're looking at an injury rate of about 18%. Next slide, please. An injury rate, by the way, is not the only thing that we're here to worry about. We do lots of, uh, as John mentioned, and we do a lot of work with academy players. Now, academy players, generally speaking, there are far many of them. And I suspect from a, from a, a teenager to a first team player, the success rate, <clears throat> excuse me, of getting into a first team is probably about 10%. But yet, we know that in, in, insufficient sleep is common amongst students. My own children have this same problem. Uh, we're currently dealing with it. Um, Students sleeping uh, less than seven hours are more likely to report several injury-related risk behaviours. <clears throat> and again, we see this in our own children. Frequent use of bike helmet, infrequent use of seat belts, riding with drivers who've been out drinking, um, compared to uh, students uh, who sleep nine hours or more. So this is a, this, this is, this is a universal issue and a, and a problem that's going to deal with us all. Injury rates often are coming off the back of uh, choices. Uh, next slide, please.
the slides, the slides seem to be sleepy too today, I think. Decision making. Clearly motivation, focus, memory and learning are all impaired by reduced sleep. Um, and sleep, as, as Dan explained before, it does impair the brain's frontal lobe. So our decision-making abilities are limited. There is a direct relationship between sleep, pain, and mood. In fact, if anyone, um, if anyone unfortunately suffers or knows somebody who suffers with fibromyalgia, this is the cycle that is very difficult to break. So you struggle to sleep at night, and I think some of the Q&A has been in and around struggling to get to sleep. So you struggle to get to sleep so then you become a little bit more moody and because you're a little bit more moody you struggle to get to sleep at night and because you're struggling to get to sleep everything hurts a little bit more and because everything hurts a little bit more again you become more moody and it's a cycle very hard to break but decision making um, much like injury rates and decision making is something that's not going to only impact the sales sharks but indeed everyone who's who's listening or, or watching this session next slide please Measures of athletic performance specific to basketball were recorded and, 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 and there was evidence to show uh, it, improve, it improved uh, sprint time and shooting accuracy. The, the, the second quote that I take here um, is that the, the, it was increased by 9%. Um, and the specific measures, these are linear measures of improved performance as a result of improved sleep. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, um, and I think John actually mentioned, while sleep is a real research to the benefits of sleep, into the science of sleep, um, you can see here that um, sleep deprivation was shown to have a negative impact on bench press, leg press, and deadlift exercises. And we work with a number of weightlifters, for example, where that's really quite a keen uh, issue to be worrying about. But you can see that the quote um, that I refer to, or quote, that it, it just further highlights the point that sleep is, whilst, whilst we know is the single most important thing in terms of the rehabilitation of a sportsman or sports person, and is probably the single most important thing in terms of the rehabilitation of a stroke, everyone in, but is also equally relevant to that, that theory. The, we're looking at this from 1990. Next slide, please. I think we've, we, I think we've, we, we've drilled the point home. So I think you, chaps in, in the session are either going to be drinking more tonight or sleeping better. Either way, we know that there is a, compar you know, there is a comparison between uh, sleep deprivation and being intoxicated by alcohol. And I suspect no athlete, whilst, whilst many athletes that we've worked with have admitted to doing an all-nighter, I suspect very few athletes um, find themselves on the training pitch or, or certainly in professional competition um, intoxicated with alcohol. And I, and I suspect nowadays, if they were, um, there's very little chance of them having a long-standing career. Next slide, please. So uh, uh, another study, and this is, this is, I think, is a really interesting one. In terms of playing careers, you often find when we talk to the academy players versus when we talk to the first teams, that the, the first teams take this far more seriously. When you're a 20-year-old and you've just started your career in the first team of any professional sports club, you are somebody who feels normally um, bulletproof. But as the career progresses, and, and actually the majority of our work is done with former rugby players, so those players... And you saw from John's slides the sort of damage that, and, and, and the effects that their bodies uh, are put through with, with rugby. Um, playing careers, or, or, or careers generally, whether we're talking about the sport or whether we're talking about my career, um, there is a linear relationship between how much we sleep and our, our, and our careers. So the, um, the AESS score, the Epworth Sleepiness Scale, was actually created um, to help diagnose uh, sleep apnea. Uh, and in simple terms, the players who had a better score, uh, were, 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 they were 72% likely to be uh, um, the same level of their, of, of their ability a year later, whereas those players 
with a with a with an ear score uh, of ten or fifteen had far less chance, um, and and it really was a linear decrease in a career um, in, in playing career longevity. Next slide, please. Andre. I don't know if anyone on, on, online today are snooker fans, but one of the most famous um, matches in, in recent history was with Graham Dot, who um, was actually losing, I think, by about 15 rounds, um, came back and ended up getting level and finally, unfortunately, losing uh, the final. We'll have a video uh, just to show you the interview after that brutal game. Next slide, please. Okay. And I never done anything. Being honest, I, I lay in my bed and tried to, try to sleep, which I never done because I've got, that's another story. But I've got serious problems in my sleep, um, and it's, it's ruining my career. If I'm being honest, it's getting to, the, it's getting to the stage I'm really struggling with. Um, so I tried to sleep, never slept. But as you, you don't really think you're going to win. Mm. But I never like the thing that people say were well, you're not under any pressure and you can play well. That, that doesn't wash with me. Because if you're not under any pressure, you won't play well. Yeah. You need to be nervous and you need to have something to try and to do. So I'm still proud that I came back. I mean, I would have been, I've done practically everything you can do here and that would have been biblical <laughs> if I'd won that. But, um, I, I, I mean, everybody feels unlucky when they lose. But I mean, I just think I've potted a great red. And if I don't land as close to the pink, I think I'm going to win, but I've landed that close. I can't get higher up, and even the red with the rest, all I can leave is the one I'm playing. And for the red to come all the way back up, normally it would wobble and stay down. For it to come back up and land there was was cruel um, to lose that way. You, you genuinely couldn't put any words how how hard and how bad it is. I think um, why my forum can go look really well one day, really bad the next, it is just clearly obvious. I mean, I've never really said it to you guys. I've lost lots of matches that I know was to do with that, but I don't say it because I don't really see the point. Um, but it's, it's, it's hard, it's to do with, it doesn't matter how much I sleep, I don't get any benefit of sleep, so I'm continuously tired. Um, but it, it's getting worse, it's getting worse. Thank you. Next slide, please. So I'm going to just give you some, some very basic tips, but then I really want to get on to the, uh, the, the, I guess, why I've been invited to come and talk to you, which is a better understanding of nighttime posture. But just to very quickly go through top 10 um, sleep tips to a consistent time we've discussed, using the bedroom only for sleeping. Uh, sleep is where the bed, uh, your bedroom is for sleep and nothing else. Um, so for example, resolving daily dilemmas outside of the bedroom um, and trying to establish a bedtime routine that doesn't actually change during the weekend will, will help with a more consistent sleep pattern. To try and create a, a comfortable environment, not to watch one's clock. I've always been advised that if you struggle to fall asleep at night, that the best thing to do is get out of bed, go and grab a glass of water and change what you've been doing and start again, rather than staring at your clock, staring at the wall. Um, we, we, it's been well discussed today not to use caffeine uh, prior to sleep, and certainly alcohol is not a sleep aid, um, it, albeit that we've all had a very comfortable night's sleep. Uh, after after a, a bit of alcohol, it certainly isn't providing you with any sleep quality. Um, we firmly believe not to take naps during the day if it's possible, um, because that does take you out of your circadian rhythm. Um, and as I said before, if you are struggling to get to sleep, leave the room and come back a little bit later. Next slide, please. And here's really where, where, where Levitex and, and, and we come into play. Um, we are experts in posture. And yet, um, you know, you will see lots of adverts for different products online, but yet the 26%, the, the single biggest reason why we don't sleep, and this is, a, this is a, a quote from the UK Sleep Council from a couple of years ago, remains to be that we are uncomfortable in bed. Next slide, please. So when it comes to sleep, there are various things that we 
discussed trying to not have an argument before you go to sleep. Well, that's great if, if you're lucky enough that that be the case or not to have a stressful day at work and reduce those stresses. Things like temperature, lighting, noise and gadgets is far more easy to manage and is far more easy to standardise. And being relaxed is a little bit more tricky. But what we, what, what, what we can do and what is often negated and, and all the time we've worked in sports and we work across a, a, you know, a plethora of disciplines, we're yet to meet an elite sportsman who actually knows what they sleep on and how that's impacting their sleep quality. So if you are the person who only gets six hours a day and you're really struggling to do so, or if your lifestyle choices are such that sleeping um, for longer is not possible, then the trick really is to try and improve your sleep quality, the time that you are in bed. And from a postural perspective, posture is the 24 hour fight against gravity. And so as you can see my, me now, even as a postural expert leaning over my desk, my makeshift desk, as we deal with our uh, corona um, changes. And when we're going to bed, that is our opportunity to actually fight against our day. So to be able to provide neutral final line sleeping is far easier than, um, than trying to work with the ergonomic assessments of your daytime postures, whether you sat at your office um, or doing some of the work that John will do with his team. Uh, at daytime posture is far complicated to manage. So when, you're, when, you, when you are sleeping, one of the things that's going to improve your sleep quality is your nighttime posture. Uh, next slide, please. And we often and we often like to go. Uh, we often like to end our talk with with this final question, which is: Is what we lie on killing our sleep? Um, if if the single biggest reason why we why we don't sleep properly at night is because we're uncomfortable, then really this is the thing we need to start thinking about. Um, John alluded to the fact before that, that the sale players all take their pillows away with them because this is an opportunity to standardise some of the variables that you might have. Um, you will have seen, unfortunately, Tokyo never happened but the Olympic Village in Tokyo had planned to use uh, paper beds uh, uh, as, the, as the bed of choice for uh, some of the greatest uh, uh, sportsmen the of, of world has to offer. Um, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to hear what I've got to say. If you have any questions, please add them to the Q&A. And I believe um, this is how we're going to end. If you told an athlete you had a treatment that would reduce the chemical state of stress would naturally increase human growth hormone that enhances recovery rates, that improves performance, they would all say yes. Sleep does all of these things. Thank you. Thanks very much uh, indeed, James. Uh, some fascinating stuff there. I'm going to ask James to stay there and if John, Dan and Sergey could now uh, turn on their cameras and microphones, it is time to answer some of your questions. Uh, Sergey, I have to ask you first, how was the 33 <coughs> minutes on the uh, elliptical trainer? I can show you where it is. So you see, this is my office, right? So I'm here. And then I have this machine, which is right there, uh, which is just next to my, uh, you know, next to my uh, place. Excellent. And I just stand on it and use the iPad uh, <laughs> and listen. So I did 33 minutes. It's very, very quiet. It's called Kaiser. It's a short stride. So if I'm talking to somebody important, I take a very low effort so I can breathe normal. But if I'm talking to somebody um, uh, internal uh, or a friend, I can take very strong effort so I can breathe <laughs> <laughs> and sweat. And so. why 33 minutes? Precisely. I don't know, just like numbers. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> Sometimes it's 11 minutes. It depends on, on how much time I have. So listen, I have to, I have to ask you, um, there was the, the, the uh, slide that Dan brought up in his presentation, uh, which really resonated to me. And it, it seems to have been in recent years become more and more of a trend that people take a real matter of pride in the fact that they can survive on so little sleep and they're working so hard that they only slept two or three hours last night. You mentioned you know, the importance of taking a holistic approach to business. How much do you think that this last few weeks, few months, is going to change how businesses like yourselves at Acronis. I, 
yeah, deal I think what, with with health and well being uh, and change their approach to these things? I, I think it's uh, quite interesting, but as I mentioned in the last twenty eight years in business, I've never traveled so little. Uh, so I've been in Singapore for three and a half months, and then I've been here in Italy uh, for um, uh, one and a half. Uh, and, and one thing which I found out, and that's one thing which also affects the sleep pattern, is that the traveling wasn't so necessary. That one thing which happened is that all this uh, travel which I did was actually more productive if I were to set up a very good studio, which I have here with a professional camera and light, and the background and big screen in front of me and I can do a whiteboard and whatever. And so that's one thing. And I think a lot of people will realize it. Then the second thing, which is also in interesting is that the offices are not so necessary. So we all go to office, but really after COVID, I started going to office and I realized that I lose productivity while I come to office, I cannot talk in the elevator, you know, then I go back from the office, I need to go for coffee, people come in, come out. Then um, while actually working from home, not only I can do sports, I can eat during the work and more importantly, online people are much more precise. You can have a 15 minutes um, or back to back meetings, you can have 15 minutes meetings and 15 minutes breaks and people come on time because they don't need to go anywhere versus in the real world, you have to probably have on meetings which are at least 30 minutes because it takes time to go to meetings. And so I do think um, the world will change significantly. It's obviously very difficult to predict how, uh, but uh, the change was coming already. Even before COVID, companies like ours had a significant number of um, employees working from home and uh, not coming to the office at all and, and traveling not much. And you know, some companies, famous companies in technology space, they just never had offices. And, and so now I think many more companies will con consider doing this. Obviously, it's not a perfect situation for our sport partners because um, uh, one of the things about sports is people want to go to a stadiums and have the experience going to a stadiums. I think it's easy to organize a meeting like this where there is five of us, but to organize a meeting of 100,000 fans is slightly more complicated. Yeah, absolutely. We long for, for the day when fans are going to be back at, at sporting events, but obviously only when it's safe to, to do so. We have had some questions sent in. Uh, so I'm going to ask this one to Dan uh, from Saeed Wakas uh, Mosin, who says, my sleep schedule is five hours, then three hours during the day. I get eight hours, but in two parts due to my job schedule. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, in yeah, interesting challenge because uh, I do have actually have a client based in the US like this who is a trader and trades in, uh, yes, okay, keep it going. I'm keeping count. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's also uh, what I do, yeah. yeah anyway, anyways. <laughs> um, who, uh, who is a trader in, in, in America but trades a lot on the European uh, stock market as well. So he uh, regularly wakes up at three o'clock in the morning. Um, so we're trying different things with him because – his sleep, uh, similar to yours, is, uh, is very disrupted. Um, I think the tricky thing is there is that with rapid eye movement sleep is as you go through eight hours or nine hours of sleep, that period of rapid eye movements, the time when your mental regeneration is occurring, gets larger and larger. So that's why that first graph I showed you, if you don't sleep those, if you sleep six hours instead of eight hours, you're losing a big chunk of that at the end. So... I think uh, it's very difficult to substitute by having sleep that's broken up. For him, what we're trying to do is make him go to, to bed a little bit earlier, which actually is okay uh, most of the time because it gets, uh, especially in the winter, it's getting uh, darker earlier. But if you can sync it with daylight hours, then, then great. Um, but for, for this guy who wakes up at three o'clock, if we can get him to go to bed at closer to seven o'clock or even eight o'clock, um, then at least we're getting kind of seven hours of solid sleep there. Um, so he may be operating on a tie, a slightly different um, time schedule than uh, the place where he's based. Obviously, it's not healthy to stay awake during times when it's, it's dark and have um, active times during, during uh, nighttime and uh, non-active times during daytime because your circadian rhythm gets, uh, gets confused and that can lead to the health implications. Um, but if this is something you have to do for work, 
then I suggest trying to uh, mitigate those factors by perhaps on the weekend getting trying to get some solid sleep um, to, to make up for it as much as possible. Um, but I'll just give you this stat that human beings started jogging. So we started running about 2 million years ago, um, which means we started sleeping uh, way before that. Um, and we're adapted to sleep um, when it's dark. Um, uh, and uh, that's fundamental. Um, it's only in the last 100 years, 150 years, that we've really started to break that mold, um, uh, which is why some of the research is kind of um, quite sparse about the effects of it. And current um, scientists are looking into the effects on dementia and mental diseases. Um, and sleep looks to be a massive um, player in, in, in those sort of things. So um, I suggest not trying to hack that and trying to, as your best to get um, solid sleep as much as you can. So what about power naps? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. John, let, John, let's come to you with that because, I, you know, we often hear, you, you hear about athletes and sports people, they'll come back from a training session, they'll maybe have a quick nap and then crack on with session number two or later in the day. I certainly have friends and colleagues using this working from home environment who have seen that as, as a positive. Do, you, do they have a benefit? Well, when I was a professional athlete a long, long time ago now, um, it's something that I, I enjoyed doing. Um, you know, you, you'd, be up, you'd be training early, depending on where you live, you have to travel in there, you, you get in there. And normally, uh, well, when I trained, uh, the, the day was built, uh, uh, split into two, two, uh, two sessions, really. So you do your weights, a bit of the units in the morning, then you come back and do your field session. And, and most of the squad that I trained with always used to go home and sneak a, a sneaky 40 winks. Um, Nowadays, the way we set, set the squad up in terms of the, the schedule we do, the, the guys are out of the club for sort of 2, 2.33. So um, in the afternoon, not so much, but I'm, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure a number of them do uh, have, a, have a kick in the afternoon, sort of at half four or five o'clock. But again, just, just listen to James, listen to Dan. That's probably not the best thing to be doing for those guys. Interesting. I it's it's, it's really, really fun. interesting stuff. Um, James, question to you. What is the best position for sleep? I, I think any, any physio that you may meet, uh, anyone who has a, a rehabilitation need, has a, an injury, has a, a soreness, will be suggested that they sleep on their side. Um, we know that I think something like 67% of people sleep on their side. Certainly um, late pregnant ladies are encouraged to sleep on their left side. And from a rehabilitation perspective, uh, and certainly when you're talking about posture and spinal care, um, I would say the least, uh, the least offensive position is lying on your side. In an ideal world, uh, I, I encourage people to put um, a pillow between their knees and ankles to try and make their, their hips seem relatively neutral and that there'd be less pressure uh, pulling on the top hip. I, I think the point is if we're all aware that posture is the 24 hour eternal fight against gravity, that um, it's really something that needs to be considered all the time. And what was your view on uh, paper beds in Tokyo? <laughs> I was just sad that I didn't get the call to supply um, the optimum surface that would, of course, be left. <laughs> <laughs> OK, another question uh, from uh, somebody who hasn't given their name. My body has got used to six hours sleep and will wake up automatically at the six hour point. What do you recommend to do? Should we throw that to you, Dan? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's a case of, uh, of routines um, and looking at when you're going to sleep. If you are going to sleep later, um, then your body's uh, kind of in tune to wake up uh, when it starts to get, to get light. So you can really work hard to shift your, your sleep time a little bit earlier. Um, there are lots of things that you can do to encourage uh, sleep. So a lot of things we spoke about, like dimming your lights and, and getting into the mode of sleep um, a, a bit earlier. So you, you, can, um, you can try those things. Um, John mentioned uh, cherry active and tart cherry juice um, actually um, helps to increase your melatonin levels naturally. Um, so there's a few things that you can try there. Um, but in general, um, you want to reduce the stress levels um, in order for your body to go into that relaxation mode. Um, and then you're going to be set up for, for sleep better. It takes a bit of time to change routines um, with anything like any sort of training program. So I would say try and set up a routine where you're getting that 
eight hours or eight hours in bed. And uh, you're not going to achieve that um, many times, maybe in the first week. Uh, but over the course of weeks and, uh, and months, um, you can definitely, if it's a consistent bedtime, um, start to kind of train your body to do that. Your body's very trainable. When we change um, time zones, for instance, it's quite, um, you can adapt quite quickly um, to, to those different time zones. Um, so definitely look at the times you're sleeping and it could be, could be down to that. Okay, I'm afraid we are pretty much out of time. So a huge thank you uh, to uh, all of you watching for your questions. A huge thank you to our speakers for your fantastic presentations and your time. Thank you to Sergey, uh, Dan, James, and John. Uh, before we go, I want to point out an upcoming event. Uh, there it is, August the 19th. So we're gonna be looking at how office workers can reduce stress and improve mental strength. There is more information as ever on the website, acronis.events. Uh, that's just about all we've got time for today. But before we close, feel free to join the Acronis Global Cyber Summit in October from anywhere on any device and free of charge. You can register to the Global Cyber Summit on acronis.events forward slash summit 2020. And also, if you wouldn't mind and you feel uh, so inclined, uh, we very much appreciate a donation to the Acronis Cyber Foundation Emergency Relief. It's a chance to build and support schools in developing countries around the world and very close to everybody's hearts at Acronis. So uh, you will all be receiving an email of the recording of the event short, shortly. Uh, hopefully we've managed to shed some light over the last couple of hours uh, on the notion that staying cyber fit is more than just protecting data and staying safe from cyber security threats. It's also about that holistic approach we've been talking about to your fitness and not overlooking your physical and mental health as well. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you're all staying safe and well. It's been uh, fabulous to have you as part of the event and see you soon. Goodbye.